Hey, welcome back. In this episode, you're going to learn about cloud application security information. Let's have a high level look at the things what we're going to learn in this video. So after this episode, you should be able to manage cloud app security alerts, describe the risk score in cloud app security, and you would be able to use the cloud discovery dashboard as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So before I talk about discovered apps, let me show you where you can find discovered apps. How can you go to Cloud App Security Portal? You can navigate to Cloud App Security by going into portal.cloudappsecurity.com and sign in with your credentials. So what I am having is a demo environment, so you don't, so you won't see much information within this. But this is how you can access it. You can go to the dashboard by going under Discovery and click on Cloud Discovery Dashboard. The cloud discovery dashboard is designed to give you more insight into how cloud apps are being used in your organization. It provides an at a glance overview of what kind of apps are being used, your open alerts, and the risk levels of apps in your organization. It also shows you who your top app user are and provides the app headquarter location map as well. The cloud app discovery has many options for filtering the data. Filtering allows you to generate specific views depending on what you are most interested in, in using easy to understand graphics to give you the full picture at a glance. Now let's understand how can you generate cloud discovery executive report. The best way to get an overview of shadow IT use across your organization is by generating a cloud discovery executive report. This report identifies the top potential risk and helps you plan a workflow to mitigate and manage risk until they are resolved. And the Cloud App Catalog gives you a full picture of what Cloud Discovery identifies. And the Cloud Discovery analyzes your traffic logs against Microsoft Cloud App Security's Cloud App Catalog of over 16,000 apps that are ranked and scored based on more than 70 risk factors to provide you with ongoing visibility into cloud use, shadow IT, and risk shadow IT processes into your organization. The Cloud App Catalog rates risk for your cloud apps based on regulatory certification, industry standards, and best practices. Now let's understand how can you customize the risk score. The Cloud Discovery provides you with important data regarding the credibility and reliability of the cloud apps that are used across the environment. Within the portal, each discovered app is displayed along with the total score representing cloud app security's assessment of their particular app's maturity of use for enterprises. The total score of any given app is a weighted average of subscores relating to the subcategories which cloud app security considers when assessing reliability. So there are basically four categories. So let me explain you one by one. The first one is general. This category refers to basic facts about company that produces the app, including its domain, founding year, and popularity. These fields are meant to portray the company's stability on the most basic level. The second category is security. The security category takes into account all standards dealing with the physical security of the data utilized by the discovered app. This includes fields such as multi-factor authentication, encryption, data classification, and data ownership. And the third category is compliance. This category displays which common best practice compliance standards are upheld by the company that produces the app. The list of specifications include standards such as HIPAA, CSA, and PCI DSS. And the last category is legal. This category displays which apps have which regulations and policies in place to ensure data protection and privacy of the app's users such as GDPR, DMCA, and data retention policy. Now let's understand how can you manage these alerts. Alerts are the entry point to understanding your cloud environment more deeply. You might want to create new policies based on what you find. For example, you might see an administrator signing in from Greenland and no one in your organization ever signed in from Greenland before. 
you can create a policy that automatically suspends an admin account when it is being signed in from that location. It is a good idea to review all of your alerts and to use them as tools for modifying your policies. If harmless events are being considered violations to existing policies, refine your policies so that you receive fewer unnecessary alerts. So how can you govern these connected apps? Governance enables you to control what your users do in real time across apps. For connected apps, you can apply governance actions to files or activities. Governance actions are integrated actions you can run on files or activities directly from Microsoft Cloud App Security. And governance actions control what your users do in real life across connected apps. So what are the different types of governance action can be taken for connected apps? The first one is notification. So this includes alerts, email notification for users, notifying specific user and notifying file editor as well. And these alerts can be triggered in the system and propagated via email and text messages based on a severity level. The second action is governance action in apps. So granular actions can be enforced per app, specific action vary depending on app terminology. The next one is chain sharing. This action, is, this action help you remove public sharing, which allows access only to named collaborators. For example, remove public access to G Suite and remove direct shared link for Box, etc. Or it can be removing external users or making it private or remove a collaborator, etc. Another action is quarantine. This will help you put users in quarantine and allow self-service by moving the file to a user controlled quarantine folder. The next action is to inherit permissions from parent. This governance action enables you to remove specific permissions set for a file or folder in Office 365, then revert to whatever permissions are set for the parent folder. And the last one is trash, so that you can move the file to the trash folder. All right, so that concludes module seven. In the next video, we're gonna do a quick knowledge check. So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.